All right. Um, that's enough to get your blood pumping, isn't it? I told you. I told you. Nobody believed me, though. Anyway, Chapter 17, Harmonics and Cro Contrast Agents. Um, we're going to keep this simple. Uh, we're going to, you know, the, the little bit that I took out of the chapter is, it, is you know, this chapter is very saturated with, with long-winded explanations, but I'm going to try my best to break it down simple because that's the way, you know, that's the way the registry wants to know it. They're not going to ask you. The registry is not an essay. It's a multiple choice. There's four answers. Pick the right one. So as long as you know the principles and the and the, the rules, then you'll be fine. Um, we're going to learn what is harmonics, what are contrast agents. We're going to learn linear and nonlinear behavior. We're going to learn contrast agents and harmonics. We're going to learn tissue harmonics. Very simple, uh, so let's get right to it. Um, harmonic imaging is the creation of an image from sound reflections at twice the frequency of the transmitted sound. Now, automatically you ought to be thinking, okay, well, how? Because I know that when I pick up the probe and it's 3 megahertz, how are you telling me that I can get 6 megahertz? Well, there's a simple answer and we'll get to that. Uh, for example, a transducer transmits a sound pulse with a frequency of 2 megahertz. Well, if I know harmonics, right off the bat, if I stick it in my brain that it creates an image at twice the frequency, so therefore the transmitted frequency is called the fundamental frequency. That's the frequency that we transmit from the transducer. It's, think of it as the original, if you will. Uh, fundamental frequency is 2 megahertz. Well, in harmonic mode, if I have the harmonics on, the image is created from sound reflections with the frequency of 4 megahertz. Of course, that's going to be called the harmonic frequency, which is twice the transmitted frequency. So, anybody can double any number. If I tell you that uh, candy is scanning uh, a gallbladder and decides to use harmonics. The fundamental frequency is uh, 5 megahertz. What is the harmonic frequency? 10. Simple as pi. So, harmonic frequency sound waves arise from nonlinear behavior. It's very important to know, to memorize, to stick in your brain, to understand through the concepts we're going to talk about. But it's, you know, non-linear. Linear is is that think of you think of linear I think of even or in a line or in a row organized. Non-linear then becomes irregular or sort of unorganized if you will. And that's the way I think about it. So again, physics is easy if you just stick these simple little notes or red flags in your in your brain somewhere and relate it to these terms. So it's important to understand harmonic frequency sound waves arise from nonlinear behavior. So of course if we have a fundamental frequency and a harmonic frequency then of course we have to have a fundamental image and, an harm and a harmonic image. So the fundamental image is created by processing reflections that have the, sorry about that, Annette and Lacey, same frequency as the transmitted sound. Sorry, typo. The harmonic image then becomes the image is created by processing reflections that are twice the fundamental frequency. It's the same thing. I just, instead of putting frequency that made the image, I put the image that is made by the fundamental frequency. Harmonic image is the image that is created by the harmonic frequency. Well, what's the fundamental frequency? It's the, the transmitted sound. What is the harmonic frequency? Twice the fundamental frequency. Very simple. Um, harmonics are most effective when the fundamental image is suboptimal because harmonic waves undergo less distortion than fundamental sound waves. 
Um, I think Annette asked the question, uh, are there instances when, when we would use this? I think we talked a little bit about this. You know, yes, absolutely there are times where, where we don't want to have you know those side lobes or graining lobes or those artifacts in general that we can't clear up ourselves using the TGCs or uh, the the amplitude or the power and they're still just kinda hanging around but we know they're not real well basically what harmonics does is just finish it off for us and usually what we do is use this with with cystic structures or when we're imaging when we want it to be very uh, high in contrast, if you will. Um, again, you know, these are most effective when the fundamental image is suboptimal, and we use these harmonic waves because they undergo less distortion than those fundamental sound waves initially do. They're almost like they're almost like I guess uh, they have that armor to where they can go further without being. Uh, disrupted in any way. That was a ridiculously stupid comparison, but whatever. Sorry I said it. I'm not backing the tape up. <laughs> um, there are two forms of harmonics uh, which are important in diagnostic ultrasound. Tissue harmonics and contrast harmonics. And we will talk about each one of those. Um, I want you to start thinking that tissue harmonics, well, that has to be a more natural occurring harmonic. A contrast harmonic, if any of you have ever had a CT done and they put the little IV in you and they use contrast, well, that's a man-made assisted type harmonic. Um, one occurs natural, the other we help along. So first, let's understand where harmonics, where harmonic frequencies, excuse me, arise from. Just harmonics in general. What did we talk about earlier? That nonlinear behavior. Well, if we have linear behavior and nonlinear behavior, then we have to first describe linear so that we understand what nonlinear is. So non, -lin scratch that. Linear behavior means proportional or symmetrical. Uh, means that the systems respond in an even manner. If you look at figure 17.1, and I'm going to try to put it on the screen here, you have an X and Y axis. Is that not a straight line? It's a beautiful linear pattern, correct? All would agree. An example. An elevator at the ground floor of a hospital takes 10 seconds to travel from the ground floor to the first floor. Then it would take 20 seconds to reach the second floor from the ground floor. 30 seconds to reach the third floor from the ground floor and so on and so on. That's even 10 seconds for every floor basically. Non-linear behavior means irregular or disproportionate or asymmetrical these are all fancy words for what I spoke about earlier. It's just terminology. So figure 17.2 shows that nonlinear behavior. That is not a line, so it's nonlinear. Um, another example <clears throat> for nonlinear behavior. A different elevator at the ground floor of a hospital takes 10 seconds to travel from the ground floor to the first floor. 16 seconds to reach the second floor, 19 seconds to reach the third floor, etc. That is not even at all. This behavior is uneven or disproportional. It's irregular. So keep in mind we spoke of harmonics coming from nonlinear behavior. So what we'll do is we'll explain the the contrast agents first in the book and we'll move on from there. So contrast agents, these are those man-made you know, um, things that we put inside the body, not that naturally occur, uh, so we can enhance things. 
that's what contrast does if you have a CT for example and you have it with and without contrast you first have the CT with nothing okay without contrast then they put the IV solution in you or the contrast agent in you via IV and that enhances things that they might not see as as nicely as they would without the agent uh, it gives the doctor uh, a good way of of uh, of being more diagnostic for example uh, this is a silly example but let's say I have a, a white piece of paper and I write my name in glue like we did as kids well yeah I can see my name right but if I sprinkle glitter along that page that contrast agent that that glitter immediately attracts itself or adheres to that glue right then I shake it off and voila I have this beautiful glittery picture if you will of kin in whatever color I want I know everybody wants one of those as a kid that says kin but only I had one so again that was cheesy it's Sunday morning please forgive me uh, so contrast agents are also called micro bubbles uh, these are gas bubbles uh, entrapped in a shell that are ingested swallowed or injected into the circulation intravenously we can drink these we can shoot them into our vein um, and this this helps us visualize things it enhances things that we want to see contrast agents have a different acoustic fingerprint than blood or tissue and therefore can create strong reflections that actually light up blood chambers vessels or other anatomic regions we we inject this into the blood and if I mean how many of you have ever thought about seeing blood we never talked about seeing blood unless we put color flow on it or I know this is jumping ahead but if I just I've showed you the carotid artery before did you see blood racing through that vessel no you just saw a black vessel on the screen you didn't necessarily see blood running through it you know this gives us an opportunity if we had to to do that if we saw a clot if we saw something in the heart and we needed to really light it up you know this allows us to make that to give it I guess the ability to create those stronger reflections that blood or tissue that we want to see <clears throat> if that makes sense um, figure uh, 17 3 and we'll talk about this in class has a has a be I'll explain the picture has a beautiful picture of a cardiac study and they're using a contrast agent and the cardiac chamber is filled with contrast and is very well defined and it kind of brings out that blood clot that otherwise might have been just my, I think there's something there but when we use the contrast agent it's like yep that's there and so that's what we're doing with this now I'll explain something a little bit because right now you're thinking holy cow we gotta inject stuff and make people swallow stuff no <clears throat> contrast agents must meet the following criteria they have to be safe they have to be metabolically inert they have to be long-lasting they have to have it be a strong reflector of ultrasound and they must be small enough to pass through capillaries safe obviously means it's like any drug like anything we put into our body for medical purposes it has to be safe uh, metabolically inert means that it, it has to be I guess digestible <clears throat> it has to be it has to to agree with us I guess um, long-lasting of course it has to be long-lasting because by the time they swallow it or by the time we put it in their vein via IV you know, we, be, we need to be able to do the test so it, it can't just go in the body and then disappear uh, it has to be a strong reflector of ultrasound and that's why they they create these micro bubbles the way they do so that they 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 are a stronger reflector than 
the natural tissue or what's in our body. And they must be small enough to pass through capillaries so that we can get our body can get rid of it because it is a man-made substance. Uh, we don't want to keep it forever. Um, so what I'll do is we're going to continue on with this with part two. Uh, stay tuned and I'll see you in a little bit.